You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. Most options trading platforms are commission-free, and there are some that don't charge per contract fees. Public.com goes a step further. When you trade options on public, there are no commissions, no per contract fees, and you get a rebate of up to 18 cents per contract traded. That means it costs less than zero dollars per transaction. In other words, instead of paying to place options trades, you literally earn money, and that money can add up fast. If you trade 1,000 option contracts on public, you'll earn up to $180 in rebates. 10,000 contracts, up to almost $1,200. It's pretty obvious why NerdWallet recently gave options trading on public five out of five stars. Because public really stands out for the cost of its options trades. Their words, not ours. If you want to start paying less than $0 to trade options, check out public.com and get a rebate of up to $0.18 cents per contract traded. Paid for by Public Investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It's that time, listeners. Yes, it is one of my favorites. I can't declare my favorite because they're all my children here on the network at the end of the day. But it's one of my favorite days on the network because it's one of my favorite shows. Yes, it's Education Wednesday. That can mean only one thing. It is time once again for Options Boot Camp, what the cool kids call the old OBC, and it has been running for a while, so we definitely get the long-running moniker on there. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, except no substitutes. Listen, not that there really are any, but (laughs) except none nonetheless. (laughs) Of course, if you're just listening to OBC, I know there's a dedicated cadre of you who love yourself some OBC. Hey, we love you out there, but you're missing out on a whole metric ton of options content you got the whole archives of opr to check out if you want more educational content brian and i just did a new live opr hitting the feed as we speak i believe we did it last week or two weeks ago now down at oic live in person in the same room as mr overby that was fun so that feed's still alive and well and couple of hundred episodes waiting there for you most of them very evergreen So make sure you're checking out OPR. If you're missing it out, it's very much a sister program to this one. Of course, the option block, you get a little bit savvier in the options. Well, you want to talk about what's trading. A great educational component there called the strategy block with our buddy, Mr. Uncle Mike, who has been on this show as well. Of course, volatility views every Friday for you vol heads out there. Maybe like some commodities, some more futures options oriented programming. This week in futures options coming at you every Thursday. We got the advisors option with our buddy Matt from ORATS, who's been on this show a bunch of times. All sorts of great stuff lurking in there. And yeah, it goes back 17 years. So you've got an abundance of riches 
to go through. So if you're just listening to OBC, make sure wherever you're listening to this, it's available everywhere. Just upgrade to the full network. Type in Options Insider Radio Network. You'll get it all. You can get our app as well, even though there's been some issues on the Android side. I know for that recently with all the updates going through. I'll make sure it's live for you folks. But make sure you're getting the whole network. You're really missing out if you're just listening to OBC. And, of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you just missed yesterday our buddy Mr. Scott Nations fresh off his Jeopardy run. (laughs) <laughs> joining us on the pro Q&A hot seat. He got tired of answering Ken Jennings questions. He wanted to answer your questions instead about vol and everything else. Of course, options oddities at the end of the week, giveaways, live streams, this, everything else we do. Only one place to get it all. The options insider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. As we learn who's joining us on the old program today, I'm pleased to welcome back on our old friend, the black hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli, from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, welcome back to the show, sir. Always good to be back uh, because this is one of your favorite shows because you get to hang out with me. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to, you know, provide that service for you. Yes, (laughs) very much. That is the reason. I get to (laughs) share time, share a microphone with the one, the only black-hatted one himself. I guess some other people like it too, Dan, including this week Olympia82, Leaving us five stars out there saying, great show. Just wish it was longer. (laughs) Trying to get Dan to sit still for half an hour is hard enough, Olympia. If we go beyond that, Dan, I don't know. You might be uh, three sheets to the wind by the end of the show if you go beyond a half an hour. So for everyone's safety and sanity, we tend to keep it around a half an hour. Sometimes we go longer when fun warrants it out there. But thank you for that love, Olympia82. And everyone else who takes the time to rate us and review us across all the platforms. But now, Dan, it is time. It is time for us to get basic, a little bit of the old basic training. All right, Boot, it's time to get in line. What you're going to do is learn. You're going to learn how options work. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. You're going to learn options trading inside and out, basic to complex. There will be no failures. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Pull in. Print bear to learn. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, welcome to the basic training. Today's episode is going to be uh, one of those very special episodes of Blossom. It's an important one and an interesting topic that many would say is forgotten or overlooked. Indeed, uh, the redheaded stepchild of the options market, of the options Greeks in particular out there. I'm not sure. Is, is, can you still say that anymore? Is that offensive to redheaded people? I don't know. The gingers, as the, as the Europeans say out there. We'll just call it the forgotten son, shall we? of the options market. But Dan, you got me thinking last week when you did your question of the week about everyone's least favorite Greek, which is, of course, Ro. You know, I I thought about it and I said, you know, let me go back and look. Let me go back and look in the archives. See how many episodes about Ro we have done. Dan, we have done this show since all the way back in the primordial ooze days of 2013, I believe. And... Take a guess off the top of your head. How many row centric where row was the main topic, the focus of the show? How many episodes have we done? Well, I can't remember for sure, but I'm going to say somewhere between zero and zero. (laughs) (laughs) You are correct, sir. Yes, I went back and looked and that kind of that that surprised me. I thought for sure we had done one somewhere. (laughs) Uh, about Roe, but no, Dan, zero, a goose egg since 2013, <laughs> hundreds of OBCs, and we've never done a full deep dive into Roe. Isn't that stunning? Does that not say it all right there, sir, that it is the forgotten stepchild of the options market? Yeah, man, that's uh, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? Now, listen, that's not to say we haven't touched on Roe in the past. We've had episodes where people have written in asking questions. Obviously, last episode, Dan did his question of the week about it. Before that, you have to go all the way back to July of 2022. So nearly two years. We had, I think, a listener question. The episode was entitled Cash and Cocaine Soft Drinks, episode 195. (laughs) Uh, Before that, in May of 2022, you could tell rates were just starting to come back on the horizon. So Roe starting to become a, a focus again. Episode 185. It was about diagonals and option scams. 109 from 2020, when to roll your short puts. We touched on it then. 
August of 2020, episode 99. And again, I went through and looked through all these, and these are mostly just listener questions, or we talked about some other strategy that had some sort of interest rate component. So we touched on Roe very briefly. But none of these are deep dives. Episode 98 from August of 2020, the mysterious Vix touched on it there. Uh, your questions, 85, we touched on it that May of 2020. So 2020 was a big year for it. Before then, again, just light touching on Roe. Episode 68 from Halloween of 2017, we touched on it then. That was a mail call, Palooza, so I'm guessing that was a listener question. Uh, episode 52, looking back at 2014 from December of 2014, we touched on it then. And then uh, episode 34, ah, appropriately enough, entitled a very special episode. <laughs> we touched on it back then. That was from November 20th of 2013. So you have to go back a ways, listeners, to really get a sampling of row, but none of them were the deep dive, Dan. So let's let's do it now. Let's just cast the monkey off of our shoulders that is row once and for all. Never again will we speak of it, Dan, on the show. <laughs> but you touched on it last week. I know for a lot of our newer listeners, they may not know you have written a book or two, including the book about the Greeks called uh, Trading Options Greeks out there. So, Dan, I will let you start with this. First off, I'm curious, is Roe the shortest chapter in your book, sir? You know, I'm going to tell you something, Mark. Uh, strangely, I spent, like, kind of a fair amount of time on it. Um, I've got, I think there's, like, three chapters or something. <laughs> I, could, I know, isn't that crazy? So but, Delta gets one page and Roe gets three chapters. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, it's not just row. It's, you know, like put call parody kind of relates to it. And um, so, you know, like it, it's funny. Row is kind of the least significant usually in a lot of ways, but it, it plays into a lot of other stuff. All right. Well, you spent three chapters on it, so I, I will turn the microphone over to you, sir. <laughs> you have a lot to say clearly about Roe. Uh, <laughs> let's start there for the, the newcomers who are legion out there. What the heck are we talking about? What is Roe, Dan? All right. So think about it, right? So if you buy stock, you control 100 shares. Right. If you buy 100 shares of stock, you control 100 shares by definition, by definition, excuse me. If you buy one call, you still control 100 shares only when it's beneficial. And so you pay a premium for that. So that's how options work. But if you think about it, if you're like, let's say we're talking about a hundred dollar stock versus a hundred strike call. Well, a hundred dollar stock, you're tying up. $10,000 worth of capital. And there is an interest rate component to that capital being tied up, whether you're literally borrowing the money or not. I mean, like, if you think about it, say you're a 20, 30, 40, 50 year old person with a mortgage, right? And you own a hundred shares of this stock that, you know, you bought it with cash. You didn't borrow the money for it, but you you could have just lowered the, this interest thing mortgage and, and, and saved paying interest on that $10,000. If you would just put it towards your mortgage. Right. So like there's always an interest rate component to tying up any sort of capital, whether it's, literal or opportunity cost. So, okay, that's the 100 shares of stock. Now we look at a call. Hey, you know, I paid $3.50 for this call. That's 350 bucks worth of cash. Okay, well, I'm still controlling $10,000 worth of stock. I still benefit if this stock goes up, but I get to keep that $10,000 and put it in the bank and earn interest on it or pay off a debt that I'm paying interest on. I get that interest benefit when I have a call instead of the stock because I'm not tying up all that cash. And then of course, just the opposite for a put, um, professional traders or really big retail traders who have some negotiating power. If you short stock, you get what's called a short stock rebate, which is basically earning interest on the cash that gets put in your account when you short the stock. A lot of traders don't get that. Smaller retail traders kind of uh, don't. <clears throat> but 
it's it's kind of the opposite because if I buy a put, then oh, I'm not earning interest on that cash. In fact, I actually had to pay a little bit of money. So puts are adversely affected when interest rates are higher. So that's that's the over reaching swath was the word I'm looking for over something. Um, that's how it, that's how it works. And, you know, there's more to talk about it on uh, more to talk about about it. But that's that's the logic behind it. Your overarching look at all things row there, sir. Overarching. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant to say. You know, listeners, I think you could probably from Dan's description start to understand why we haven't talked about row uh, pretty much ever fully on this show. Uh, we launched it back in 2013, a period when interest rates were effectively nominal. And until, as you saw even from our list of episodes, until really around post-2021 into 2022 is when we started to see Fed ticking up rates, interest rates obviously increasing, and all of a sudden row starting to come back on the docket. Hence the propensity for listener questions over the last few years and us touching on it in various aspects. So row is very much situational. If we're talking this show back in, you know, 2010, 2012, there's no reason to talk about row. There's zero literally reason to talk about row. In spite of Dan devoting three chapters of his book to it out there. So it is very much a situational Greek, which is one of the reasons why it is indeed the forgotten stepchild <laughs> of the options market out there. So Dan broke it down a little bit. You could probably think now intuitively the types of strategies where row will make a difference. Well, first off, you have to be in some sort of environment where rates are significant to begin with, as I mentioned earlier. So that's the context for row. If you're lacking that, if rates are effectively zero, row is really not going to matter much anyway, unless you're talking extreme examples out there. But when the rates are actually a factor again, like they are now, now you're looking at some types of strategies that row can have more of an impact on. For example, typically when you're talking about row, you need to go a little bit longer term. You need to go a little bit farther out of the term structure. If you just trade in dailies, you're not really going to feel the impact of row because at the end of the day, it's an interest rate. You need some time for that to make an impact <laughs> on your option. And so uh, longer term is kind of the name of the game when it comes to row. Also, strategies that tend to involve a significant amount of capital. Dan was talking about synthetics before, could also be deep in the money type options or anything that's really kind of tying up a lot of capital. Uh, that's something that's going to have a decent row impact as well. So maybe you're going to do a long-term stock substitution. You're buying a very far out, very in the money type call, putting a lot of capital at work behind it. That's going to have some interest rate impact as a result. Any type of longer term, very beefy, capital intensive type options trades are where you're really going to see the impact of row the most. Uh, Dan, you have any other examples you want to sneak in there of trades or strategies that you think are most impacted by row, sir? Um, well, I mean, the, the, one of the best things to think about is I always, I always do this in, in our Greeks class. I always do this with all the Greeks. Just, I just talk about the dynamics of it. So <sighs> options that have more time until expiration are more affected by by row naturally because i mean you know if you think about this just from when you were taking economics classes in college or or you know thinking about well i mean let's talk about a mortgage again right you could take out a five year mortgage i mean the amount of money that you pay in interest is you know it's not a lot over 5 years you take out a 30 year mortgage and geez, Louise, the first time you ever look at your bank statement uh, of your mortgage and you see how much interest you're going to pay over 30 years, you'd like you want to like grab your chest, you know, wheezy, I'm coming. More time just costs more money in interest. So consequently, longer term options are much more affected by them. So, I mean, to me, that's the main thing is... The more time until expiration, you have to start caring about it a little bit. Um, 
And like Mark pointed out earlier in the show, back in 2013, I mean, you didn't have to care about it. But now, I mean, we were talking at some point about interest rates getting cut three basis points, no, starting in, uh, what, March of this year, right? Uh, eventually, they're going to get cut. And over the next couple of years, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a couple percent. And so if you're trading, um, like if you have leaps as part of like a collar, like long-term options are really good for collars, uh, poor man's covered calls, you know, like call diagonals, you might have like a one-year option or something. If interest rates go down, it's going to hurt those long-term calls. So, it, you know, those are the kind of things that really matter. And even if you've never thought about row before, if you have on long-term options, you should go to your trading platform. And I, I usually don't have options over like 30 days, but for the sake of this show, I just went into my uh, brokerage account and I put in a column. I always have a column for Delta, Theta, Vega, Volume, open interest uh, and size, oh, and implied volatility. And I just added one for row just to take a look at it. And it has a, I mean, it has a bigger impact than you, than you would think. There you go, listeners. Even Dan didn't have a row on his trading screen. That's how forgotten <laughs> <laughs> the row is. Uh, again, listeners, you could see why we haven't addressed it, even for listeners, I should say, of this show. There's not a lot of you out there really slinging a lot of paper out six plus months a year. Most of you are coming in. You're going to sell a covered call against your stock. Maybe you go out a month at the long end, probably playing in the weeklies. A lot of you now are getting lured to the zero day side of the spectrum where row is effectively irrelevant. One day is not enough time to really have an interest rate impact. So for you, if you live there exclusively, row will pretty much never matter to you. So you can forget about this one. You can forget about this episode. Wipe it out of your mind. Now, of course, you should keep all this knowledge in the back of your mind for a rainy day. You never know when you're going to need it out there. But again, for a lot of you, I would say 75 plus percent of you probably keep your options liquidity within a month. So row is never really going to come into play for most of you out there. So again, it's a very situational, context-driven Greek, but it is one of the big five, even if it's shall we say, maybe the Hermes to the Zeus of Delta or perhaps, you know, the Apollo of Vega or something like that. Let's say row a little bit uh, the second tier of the Greeks out there. Uh, Dan, do you have any other metaphors you'd like to ascribe to row and any other thoughts you'd like to leave our listeners with? You did write three chapters on it, after all, uh, when we're closing the book here on row forever. Never again shall we speak of it. So hold on a second. You're saying Delta is like the Zeus and Ro is like Nick that works at the Euro place. Yes, down the exactly. Street? Nick's Euro's cashier clerk. That is Ro. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's Euro is delicious, but he's no Zeus. <laughs> uh, um, no, I, I, I guess we're good. I guess we're good. <laughs> you were stymied by my beautiful analogy there. All right, let's keep on rolling, listeners, into a little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, let's get to it, listeners. You folks have a lot on the brain this week. Let's start off paying off some of our hotly contentious questions of the week from last week. Again, you should be following us at Options on the old Twitter so you too can play along in our questions of the week. Whenever you're listening to this, could be years down the road. I know a lot of you come in many months and years down the road on OBC. Uh, there's always going to be a fun question of the week and other content waiting for you over there at Options on the old Twitters. We're on most of the major social media platforms, but that's where our polls live. And last week, we had a couple of them for you. First off, we had a fun little flash poll. We said uh, it was inspired by our discussion on one of our other shows, The Option Block. And we said, hey, you know, Tim Cook right now, a huge buyback. They're buying Apple stock. Warren Buffett dumping a lot of his stock for Apple, for Berkshire Hathaway. Who's right in that trade? 
And exactly two thirds, sixty six point seven percent of you said you want to sell Apple. Only a third want to buy it. Right now, the buyers are winning. Apple breaking one ninety today. So a nice little run ever since we had this poll, Dan. Does that surprise you, or were you deeply in the selling camp like the rest of our listeners? Um, no, I, I was in the buying camp. Um, I my answer when we last talked about this was was to go with uh, Tim Cook. So I guess I was I guess I was wrong relative to our listeners, but I think <laughs> Apple stock is up, so maybe I'm right relative to right in life. Yeah, uh, yeah. Apple hit one sixty nine thirty on May first, and since then it has rallied quite a bit. One ninety, pretty much even right now. So in the near term, Tim Cook appears. I guess that's what happens when you spend a hundred billion on your own stock, right, Dan? It tends to go up, at least in the short term. Yeah. Whether that's long term, we shall see. We also asked you last week. Speaking of Apple, we said, "Hey, is this the year we're going to see?" Listed zero DTE options, the ones all you folks are asking us for in Tesla, Apple, NVIDIA, all those big hot names you folks trade. And again, our audience kind of coming in on even numbers, uh, evenly split, Dan, 37% exactly for yes versus 37% exactly for no and about 26% for they don't trade zero day at all. So, Dan, our audience can't make up their mind exactly split on whether we're going to see zero day this year. What do you think? Um, I would, I mean, we will at some point, but I, I'm, I'm still in the camp that probably not this year. I think, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't have a strong conviction, but I just don't think it'll happen before the end of the year. Yeah. I tended to be on the no side of that camp as well. So I guess I tied with the 37% of you who agree with that. Uh, this week we have a similar question, Dan, it's along those same lines. The other hot issue you folks want us to talk about a lot at the Options Industry Conference, which is, by the way, that content starting to hit the full network. Another reason you should be subscribed to the full network listeners. Uh, we ask you right now this week, do you think the options on the Bitcoin ETFs, the big deal in the crypto space earlier this year in January, the big brouhaha that drove up Bitcoin was the approval by the SEC of these Bitcoin ETFs. Everyone said, okay, here we go. Now I can trade options on these things. Been a big goose egg on that front. Do you think that's going to change? Will they be approved this year, Dan? Yes or no? What is your vote? What do you think our audience is voting for? Oh, man. I'll tell you. I mean, this is similar to the to the other question in, in that regard that I still don't have a strong conviction. Uh, almost a to coin toss. <laughs> and seemingly illogical, I would say that, yes, they do get approved, even though with the other question, um, <laughs> daily options in, in Apple and such, I said no to. Um, and really, there's no difference in the logic between either of those questions. So I don't know why I'm answering them different. But uh, I just figure that as long as they passed, as long as as long as they allowed for an ETF, in Bitcoin, then it just seems like a small thing to just wave the wand and say, okay, now I can do options. You would think so, Dan. And yet uh, almost everyone I talked to at OIC last, or two weeks ago now, seemed like it was last week, uh, mm -hmm. they all pretty much said if they had to pick one or the other, they would definitely pick the zero day Tesla and Apple. I think with Bitcoin options, it's a long way down the road, apparently. And our audience agrees with that. 61.9% saying no right now. 38.1% saying yes. You got to the end of the week, so get out there at options to make your voice heard, just like a lot of you did, including Backy Beats <laughs> on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, he commented on one of our episodes entitled Strike Selection, Voodoo, and Surprise Crypto Dividends. He said, oh, I'm the first view on this. That's a first. He was all excited. I was like, yeah, you might have seen. I mentioned this before. We're kind of rejiggering a lot of our content on the back end. That's, that algorithm is going through and kind of reposting a lot of our old stuff on YouTube. So we're trying to mitigate some of that for you. But you're seeing actually older episodes of some of our stuff come through, which has been fascinating. I know for a lot of you on the YouTube side, you like to listen on YouTube. It's been giving you another bite at the apple a lot of these episodes. A lot of you are coming in saying, oh, this is great. I've never seen this. It's an episode could be from 10 years ago. Uh, so you're the first view because it's been sitting in the archives of our YouTube forever. But now it's resurfaced. So it's starting to resurface some old stuff, which is kind of fun. So, yeah, there you go, Backy Beats. You do get the credit of being the first view on that episode on YouTube. Congrats to you. You should be checking out our YouTube. Look for some fun things coming there in the near future, listeners out there. As a lot of you, again, like to quote-unquote listen 
on the old tubes. A lot more of you subscribing on YouTube, even though we kind of just use it as a secondary distribution platform. At least we used to. But uh, maybe look for some more fun stuff coming out there. And again, I know a lot of you basic traders listen to the show. We also have a lot of pros listening to the network, including to this show. Uh, we talked last week about flexes on the program. And we had uh, Scott Bauer has been a guest on a bunch of our other shows. Another former market maker like Dan and myself who's been on guest on my TWIFO program and others, uh, chime in on it. He said, uh, we talked about Dan and I said, we both didn't like to trade him as market makers, but they were kind of a one and done, set it and forget it trade. There really was no hope of getting out of it. He said, back in the day, many market makers were afraid to trade them because of fear of mispricing, but I love them because they allowed, flexes allowed another way to hedge or create a long or short Vega position. So I guess he was the one local who liked to trade flex. For most people, it really was something that was just clogging up your books and your sheets forever. There's no way to get out of it. If you liked it, it was for you. Dan, so what do you think? I guess a few a few locals were out there trading flexes, just not you or I, sir. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've made a small handful of flex trades, but I always like to keep them short term. If they were like over a year out, which a lot of times they were, I don't know, I would just make a really wide, like gigantically wide market. And if it was a big enough market, then, you know, you could – hedge it off and lock in a really really nice vowel spread so i don't know what i do know dan though is we can't conclude the show without the market taker question of the week and now it's the moment you've been waiting for it's time for the market taker question of the week I'm not going to lie, Dan. I just love it for the logins. Who doesn't need a dose of logins in their lives every week, right, sir? All right, Mr. Dan, sir, the floor is yours. The folks are waiting with bated breath, sir. What do you have in store for them? Your market taker, question of the week. All right. Are there any tickets left for the Smart Trade Summit in Sonoma in June? And yes, there are, but though that window closes in like, 10 days or something. Um, so if anybody out there was thinking about it, if you're thinking about meeting up in person in Sonoma for a three day option seminar and a whole mess of fun, you've got a matter of days to think about it. You can email me Dan at markettaker.com for details. If you don't have them, Dan at markettaker.com because I'd love to meet you. I love when I get an opportunity to meet face to face some of our listeners. Yes, it's an experience for all of them that they will never forget and usually takes them many years of therapy to forget, Dan. So once they meet him in person. But if you want to go through that shocking horror for yourself, then maybe head on out to Dan's event. When is it again, Dan? Give us the dates. It is June 13th, 14th, and 15th. All right, June 13th, 14th, and 15th. Dan has already reserved the VIP suite for me, so that's not available anymore. But maybe you can get one of the more, uh, you know, maybe you could bunk up with some other member out there, get one of the double rooms, right, Dan? Yeah, and there's not enough room in that broom closet. I mean, VIP suite anyway. Yeah, anyway, so. Yeah, the VIP suite. Good stuff <laughs> out there. But before we go, sir, uh, obviously, if folks want to learn more about the event, they can reach out to you. What if they just have regular options questions? What can they find over there in the land of MTM? Um, well, you can get them answered when you're in Sonoma, but you can also message me at markettaker.com. Just uh, click join free, join free, blah, blah, or um, you know you can you can chat uh, on the you know ask us questions page and all that. There you go, markettaker.com. Don't forget the second T for Theta. Out there, don't forget our friends over there at public.com, helping to bring this show to you for free week in week out you want to check out some of what they have to offer including those rebates out there it's a very intriguing offer out there head on over to public.com p-u-b-l-i-c.com that's the place to go even if you don't sign up tell them you heard about them on the old options boot camp that does go a long way to helping to support the network at the end of the day the sponsors love when you hear about them on the shows and that goes to keeping the shows free for all of you folks down the road so public.com shoot them an email say hey Thanks for sponsoring the old OBC and keeping it coming in our ear holes, hopefully for another dozen plus years. Out there. I don't know if Dan can make it. The day drinking is going to do him in soon. But outside of that, <laughs> good stuff. Check them out over there. Public.com, the place to go. We got to get on out of here. Back again tomorrow. 
for a doubleheader on the network of our old favorite, The Option Block, Episode 2, with the Flowmaster from SIBO joining us there to talk a whole bunch of unusual activity. That should be fun. After that, if you like Futures Options, this week in Futures Options with our friends over there at CME has you covered. Friday, Volatility Views, where we talk, guess what, all things vol as well as some international ball sneaking in there as well, which is kind of fun. And then after that, exclusively for our pro folks, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more out there. All sorts of fun coming at you out there this week on the pro. Check it out for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Then back again on Monday, we kick off the week with the option block all the way through to next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Boot Camp. Stay safe out there, everybody. Check out public.com if you want to literally earn money to place options trades. There are no commissions or per contract fees, and public gives you a rebate of up to 18 cents per contract traded. Discover why Nerd Wallet recently gave options trading on public five out of five stars and start paying less than zero dollars to trade options. Only at public.com. Paid for by public investing. Options not suitable for all investors and carry significant risk. Full disclosures in podcast description, U.S. members only. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.